Hello, I'm Bob Goulder, contributing editor with Tax Notes. The presidential election is approaching fast, and both candidates have endorsed the idea of exempting tips from the federal income tax. Now, that's bound to be a popular idea with a certain segment of the labor force. But is it good for the country as a whole? Is it good policy? To help us make sense of this, I'm joined by Joe Thorndike, contributing editor with Tax Notes. Uh, Joe, uh, as you well know, the Internal Revenue Code defines gross income as income from whatever source derived, and that clearly includes tips and gratuities. So what is the policy argument for changing the rule? Well, honestly, Bob, there is no policy argument for changing the rule, um, or at least no good argument. But let's give it a shot. So basically, the rationale, such as it is, hinges on the idea that tip workers they just deserve a break. Both candidates make this sort of argument all the time, but let's use Trump's words to get us started here. He says, when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. You do a great job of service. You take care of people. And I think it's going to be something that really is deserved. Now, when people say people making tips, when the candidates say that, they really mean people working in the service industries like restaurants and hotels and places where regular wages are typically pretty low, though not always. Well, is that a new idea, just that these folks deserve a break? Um, yes and no. How about that? <laughs> Creating a new tax break just for tipped workers, that's new. But the taxation of tips has been the subject of a lot of debate for a long time, mostly because policymakers thought that tipped workers were skipping out on their real tax burden. The income tax on tips had been poorly enforced for decades, and Congress tried a couple of times to crack down. So one time was like in the 1980s when I happened to be working at a restaurant. The waiters at Allen's Clam House, they were very angry about the IRS cracking down on tips because decades of slack enforcement had convinced them that they didn't, you know, that they deserved to underpay. So it was a tradition. Basically, that poor enforcement had bred serious disrespect for the law or at least a misunderstanding of it. Well, what's wrong with that? Why not take that and just roll with it? Well, lots of things are wrong with that, but at least four big things. So first, lots of people need a tax break, not just tipped workers, like retail clerks and fast food workers and people who work at dry cleaners, to name just a few that the government keeps track of, uh, you know, low paid industries. Don't these people deserve some sort of tax break too? Of course they do. Second big problem, lots of tipped workers, they won't get any help from the Trump and the Harris proposals. About a third of them, they don't earn enough money in a year to pay income taxes in the first place. So they get nothing. Also, you know, it's possible that employers might decide that not taxing tips means that they can lower the regular wages that they're already paying these tipped workers. So in that case, people getting tips, they're going to get something from the tax break, but they're going to lose something from their already small paychecks. All right. Number three, carving out special treatment for one kind of income that can lead to lots of game playing. Consider this Trump plan in particular, because unlike the Harris version, it doesn't seem limited to workers in certain industries. It could apply to everyone. If we exempt all tips from taxation, then maybe the doctors and the lawyers are going to decide that they won't charge hourly fees and just get paid in big untaxed tips. Their, their clients and their patients, they're not going to care. And fourth, the last big problem, this tax break it would be expensive, at least $100 billion over 10 years, maybe $200 billion, maybe even more. We don't really know because all those numbers are big and they get bigger if the lawyers and the doctors and everyone else starts playing games. And every big tax break makes other tax breaks harder. So if we give a new benefit to tip workers, that might actually deprive non-tip workers of their own tax benefit. Joe, those are all good reasons not to be doing this. So then if there's no policy justification, why are both candidates talking about this? Well, I know that this will shock and outrage you, Bob, but uh, this is vote buying at its most obvious. The plan is designed to win the votes of people working in the hospitality industry and especially the ones who live and work in Nevada. It's no accident that both Harris and Trump announced their plans for this tip tax break while speaking in Las Vegas. They, those two, they, you know, they don't agree on much, but they do both understand that Nevada is a swing state. And in a close election year, Nevada's six electoral votes, they could make the difference between winning and losing. So it's politics. There you have it. Everything you wanted to know about exempting tips from the federal income tax. Thank you, Joe. And thank you for watching. Want more like this? 
Subscribe for more tax videos. Special thanks to our executive producers, Jasper Smith and Paige Jones, showrunner and video editor, Jordan Parrish, and assistant video editor, Chris Trigo.